H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay, um, so let's get started. I'll be sharing my uh, desktop to all of you. So let me know if you are able to see my desktop. So you can ping me in the chat window if you are able to see my desktop. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's quickly have a recap of what we have discussed in the previous class. So, so I'll be asking questions for the initial five minutes. So you have to answer uh, quickly. So what is the name? Of, I mean, what is the name of C sharp compiler? Okay. So, how many compilers uh, normally come with the uh, .NET framework? Okay. And uh, how do you compile it? How do you compile a C sharp file using CSE? Yeah, CSE space file name dot CS. Okay, good. Now. What is the version of .NET Framework all of you have? Okay, so you have 4.0. Okay, one more thing. Um, where do we need to add the path of version .NET Framework version in uh, somewhere we added that in in where do we added it so that the CSC became a recognized command? Yes, in environment variables. Okay, so. What is the namespace? Yeah, a namespace is a collection of classes as well as collection of namespaces also. Okay, and uh, console is present in which namespace? Yeah, okay. Okay, right line is present in which, which class? okay okay good uh, thank you for answering so uh, with that we'll get started so uh, today yesterday if you if you are seeing my screen yesterday we discussed a simple hello world program and we discussed uh, the structure of a c-sharp program and we also saw how do we compile and execute c-sharp program without using visual studio okay so so today also today we'll be learning on data types and we'll also focus on operators in C sharp. So so let me open uh, let's discuss on data types first. So data types yeah okay. So let's discuss on data types first and then we move on to operators in C sharp. Okay. So now uh, I'll be I'll be going a bit slow today. Uh, so we'll be discussing on data types. So let's get started with the data types. So data types are mostly same in almost all the programming languages. So let's let me open a PPT which I have where I have uh, okay so anyway so now first before getting started with the data types so I just want to discuss on number system and uh, and memory units so all of you know um, all of you know that memory memory units which I have for measuring a computer uh, size or for example normally how do you measure the size of hard disk computer hard disk what are the units for measuring size 
yeah it's bytes so if you have if you have attended my class one demo i mean demo first demo which i took last week so i just have uh, given some introduction about uh, uh, memory units and uh, number system so we'll be discussing the same now uh, as a part of this course so what i'll do right now is i'll just explain um, yes i yeah initial as i said already initial five classes will be recording so so i'm recording this class so now so first the smallest memory unit is byte so one byte so byte is the smallest memory unit so so now and even the smallest unit than byte is one bit so so bit is the smallest memory unit and then so if you see the uh, comparison between uh, these data types i mean these memory units one byte equal to how many bits any idea one byte equal to how many bits yeah one byte equal to eight bits okay and and one kilobyte equal to how many bytes one zero two four yes one kilobyte equal to one zero two four bytes and what are the what is next unit after one kilobyte yeah it's one megabyte so again one megabyte is uh, is equivalent to one zero two four sorry it's one zero two four i just uh, it's a typo here so so again one zero two four uh, kilobytes and what is the next unit after megabyte yeah it's giga it's gigabyte so again gigabyte equal to one zero two four megabytes anyone knows what is the next one for gigabyte yeah it's one terabyte so anyone knows after terabyte okay so that's the homework you have to tell me what is uh, GB we have already discussed so 1 gigabyte equal to 1024 megabyte and 1 terabyte equal to 1024 gigabytes and anyway ha ha knowing till here it's uh, enough because nowadays even we are getting hard disks uh, which are of size 1 te 1 TB 1 terabyte okay so previously we used to get uh, f uh, like in GBs but even now we are getting in terabytes okay so keep this in mind we'll be discussing throughout so now uh, one more thing if if i if i enter 5 for example if i type 5 how do, how do you think this will be saved in the computer so this number will not be saved inside computer as 5 because computer only knows computer only knows zeros and ones all the computers will only know zeros and ones so so what happens is any number or any character whatever you type will be will be converted will be converted into binary and then it will be saved in the database i mean it will be saved in the in the computer okay so now if i if i enter 5 5 is a decimal number so we need to know how to convert this to binary so so the way we do uh, to convert this to binary is so i'll show how to how to convert it so let me i have a i have a small ppt so i'll be opening that so let's okay so so you're seeing this uh, i have done this for c programming but still memory units are same in all uh, anyway so we have four number systems we have binary uh, which will only have zero and ones we have octal which will have zero to seven decimal we have zero to nine so normally in day-to-day -day life whatever number system we use is decimal so and hexadecimal is is the one which we have zero to nine and a to f so a indicates 10 b indicates 11 like that c d e f so so hexadecimal is something like 0 to 15 but after 9 we are we are giving it as a to f so these are the four number systems we have just keep it in mind i mean we don't need to worry about octal or hexadecimal but just have it in mind like uh, we have four number systems okay now now we'll see how to convert how to convert decimal to binary so now uh so this is assume that that we want to convert number 13 to decimal to binary so all you need to do is you need to write like this 13 and then and then you need to divide with 2 so when you write with 2 2 6 12 so 1 is the reminder and again you need to write you need to divide with 2 2 3s are 6 what is the reminder it's 0 
and again what you need to do is you need to divide with 2 again and then you need to write 2 once 2 and the remainder is 1 so and then you have to write it in the reverse order so so you have to write like this 13 13 uh, base 10 that is normally we'll mention like this base 10 is decimal is equal to I have to write like this 1101 base 2 so 1101 base 2 so I'll explain for one more number so let's see how easy it is it's very easy uh, to convert decimal to binary so I'll explain for another number so so let's see uh, uh, I want to convert number 8 to binary so how to do that so all I need to do is I need to write here 8 um, I need to write here 8 and I need to divide with 2 to force the 8 what is the reminder 0 and after that I need to do 2 2 2 are 4 again the remainder is 0 and then what I need to do is 2 ones 2 ones 2 the remainder is 0 so you have to write like this so the answer is you have to write like this 8 base 10 you have to write like this is equal to 1 0 0 0 base 2 so the moment you type 8 inside the computer it will be stored as 1 0 0 0 so this is how you normally convert a decimal number to binary number so now question to all of you uh, can you please tell me uh, uh, what is the binary equivalent for 7 let me see who will ping first so I want to know the binary equivalent for 7 convert 7 to binary and then ping me yeah I got I got one wrong answer uh, I want to convert 7 to binary so uh, I need response from all of you so I'm not I'm getting only response from few few of you so can you please convert the number 7 can you please convert the number 7 to binary and ping me in the chat window uh, let's make the session interactive so that uh, so that yeah so now I'm getting uh, almost all the correct answers okay so let me let me show that uh, to you so I'll so let me convert myself so so I need to write the number 7 and what I need to do I need to write like this 2 so 2 2 threes are 6 and the remainder is 1 and again 2 2 ones 2 and the remainder is 1 so I need to write like this so the answer is 1 1 1 so 1 1 1 so I need to write like this 7 base 10 7 base 10 is equal to 1 1 1 base 2 so this is how uh, the number is stored in the computer okay so we'll also learn how to so we'll also learn how to convert a binary number into decimal so already we learned how to convert a decimal to binary now we will see how do we convert binary to decimal number so so assume that we got this binary number so we have this binary number I want to convert this to decimal number so all I need to do is write the number with some spaces so give some space like uh, between the numbers and last one right here like this 1 into 2 power 0 and again right here like this with this number 1 into 2 power 1 and right here 0 into 2 square from the end you have to come like this so right if if someone asks you to convert this number into decimal all you need to do is give some spaces and and write that numbers here and then multiply with 2 power 0 2 power 2 power 1 2 square 2 cube 2 power 4 and 2 power 5 so and then you have to add all these things so you have to add all these things and you have to tell the answer so 2 power 0 is 1 anything to the power 0 is 1 for example 5 power 0 is 1 5 power 1 5 power 1 is 5 and uh, f 5 square is 5 into 5 which is 25 so like this like this so let's try to convert let's try to convert another number so that you will get some confidence okay so now okay so what I'll do now is I'll try to convert another number uh, binary number into decimal so let's let me do it so I want to convert 1010 zero, zero, I want to convert 1010 zero, zero into into decimal number so what I need to do is I'll write here so so 
so i'll give some gap and write like this 1 0 1 0 and then what i'll do is 0 into 2 power 0 and then here 1 into 2 power 1 and again 0 into 2 square and then 1 into 2 cube and then i have to add all these things so be careful while adding so 0 into 2 power 0 is 0 0 into anything is 0 plus 1 into 2 power 1 is uh, 1 into 2 power 1 is 2 1 2 is 2 plus uh, 0 into 2 square 0 into 2 square is 0 plus 1 into 2 cube so 2 cube is 2 into 2 into 2 which is 8 so the answer is 10 so now I'll ask question for all of you so so I hope you got it how to convert binary to decimal so now can you tell me what is the answer for uh, what is the bin decimal equivalent for 1 1 1 0 1 so can you please tell convert this to decimal and tell me uh, what is the binary equivalent for what is the decimal equivalent for this number 1 1 0 I mean triple 1 0 1 triple 1 0 1 uh, please convert this to uh, decimal and tell me so I got one response so let me see the response from others yeah so I'm getting a couple of response so I, I am expecting the response from all of you so please uh, yeah 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 Jesse uh, you're right so uh, Sima so all of you are right so let me let me compare uh, let me do it uh, uh, by myself again so control 2 so I need to write like this one 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 zero one and I'll do it uh, I, I'm not writing so two power one into two power zero is one plus zero into anything is zero plus uh, two power zero two power one two square so here two square is four 1 into 2 square is 4, 1 into 2 cube is 8, plus 1 into 2 power 4 is 16. So 16 plus 8, 24, 28, 29. 29 is the answer. So all of you are correct. So now I guess you are clear with converting decimal to binary and binary to decimal. Okay. So now, uh, now let me ask a question. So what is the biggest number? Uh, so I said bit is the smallest unit smallest memory unit is bit so bit means it will store only 0 and 1 so so what is the biggest four digit binary number biggest four digit binary number yeah it is 1111 so we discussed in the first demo class anyway I repeat again so now so one byte equal to how many bits 1 byte equal to how many bits it is 8 bits so 1 byte is equal to 8 bits so so if someone asks you what is the biggest number that can be stored what is the biggest number that can be stored in one byte all you need to do is since 1 byte equal to 8 bits you have to write all 8 ones and you have to convert that to decimal and tell them like this is the number this is the biggest number that can be stored in one byte so can you do that for me so can you plus can you please uh, convert can you please tell me what is the biggest number that can be stored in one byte yeah I got one response so so the question is I want to I, I want to tell what is the biggest number that can be stored in one byte yeah so so there is easy way not sure how um, I got some quick responses I don't think definitely they have used so so uh, if you want to convert manually so how do we need to do is we need to write like this so one 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 and again one 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 so eight ones so eight ones is the one which is uh, which is the biggest binary number of 8 bits so what I can do is I need to convert uh, 2 power 0 2 power 1 2 square 2 cube so it's so I'm not sure how people responded very quickly uh, like 255 I guess they might have attended my uh, previous demo class or 
let me check how they have done so can you respond how you have done that uh, very quickly it's like 255 the first response I got okay so one person okay because of the demo class okay so good uh, okay okay so now uh, there is easiest way also anyway that uh, if you recollect your college days so this is a geometric progression so anyway yeah that's correct okay so the answer is the biggest binary number that can be stored in one byte is 255 the biggest binary number that can be stored in one byte is 255 okay so now what we'll do is we'll go back to the slides um, so this is clear for all of you so converting any doubts on converting binary to decimal or decimal to binary or or you want me to repeat it or is it clear okay so okay thank you uh, thank you if it's clear it's well and good so okay so now what we'll do is uh, we will okay so I'll, I'll also plan to have an exam on um, when we are done with five classes it's an online exam multiple choice I'll send a link all of you uh, should take it okay so okay so now uh, after knowing this what we'll do is we'll go to the data types so what are the different data types we have and then and then we'll we'll come back so let me open the document okay so we have basically for integer types for integer types these are the data types we have so yeah so these are the data types we have for integer types so if you see yeah I'll be sending the assignment 1 and assignment 2 after this class um, um, so all of you as I said all of you please drop a test email to my ID so I just ping my ID already at uh, the start of the class so I'm just pinging again so please drop a test email I'll be sending the assignments as well as uh, uh, I'll be sending the course content okay so um, sorry I, I'll be pinging my uh, I'll ping my email ID to all of you so yeah so this is my email ID so drop a test email to me I'll be sending uh, I'll be sending the course content as well as I'll be sending the day one and day two assignments and uh, in case if you think that you are not you cannot make the next class or you are not able to attend the class uh, yeah is this demo class again we did not record uh, so the current class is not a demo class we just started with the course uh, this is the second dot net class so I am getting a question from one of the student like uh, this is not a demo class okay and for those who missed the last class um, uh, please drop again mail to me as I said before I'll be uh, we'll be recording the first five classes so so I'll be sharing I'll, I have uploaded them in Google Drive I got from one student like uh, uh, Padmini I think I got a uh, uh, mail like she she wants the recording I just uploaded it I'll be sharing with uh, her so only for the initial five classes we'll be uh, sh uh, sharing the recordings uh, if, if you miss the class okay and uh, from later on um, in case if you think that you cannot attend the class or in that way in, in that case we'll, we'll be sharing the recording with you okay so in case if you want to record the class you can record it we have free uh, free screen sharing softwares which you can uh, I mean free screen recording softwares which you can use to record yourself uh, the reason why we are not recording all the classes is uh, maybe uh, we have seen like uh, sharing will happen again uh, which we don't which we want to prevent it okay anyway so thank you so so now uh, let's come back to the topic so we already saw that in one byte in one byte the biggest number that can be stored is 255 so now these are the data types which we have in c sharp s byte is signed byte and uh, this this four whatever you see here byte u short u int and u long this will store only positive numbers So if someone asks you the range for byte data type, the range for byte is 0 to 255. 
how we got 255 is we just converted 8 bits we just converted 8 bits to decimal and we got 255 so u shot is something like we have uh, the size is 2 bytes u shot is unsigned shot the size is 2 bytes and if you want to know the range for this you need to convert 2 bytes into decimal 2 bytes equal to 16 bits and you have to convert 16 bits to decimal then you will come to come to know the range for u shot so so i told one easy way to do instead of doing manually so you can open calculator and then and then what you need to do is you need to go to uh, view standard mode uh, i don't think it is in standard mode you need to go to programmer mode yeah yeah correct it is 65535 so you need to go to programmer mode and select binary and then type 16 once so 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 so totally i have typed to 16 binary 16 once so if you want to convert this to decimal just click on this decimal so first i repeat again open calculator in programmer mode and then select binary first the moment you select binary uh, the moment you select binary you can notice that all these buttons are disabled because for binary only one and zero binary numbers will have only one and zero so so now that is the reason why these are disabled so you cannot type them so now after entering this binary 16 once just click on decimal so that will convert and show you 65535 so if someone asks you what is the range for u shot for u shot the range is 0 to 65535 so when you go for interview so you don't need to buy hard these numbers but still if when you go for interview or anything so if they ask you can you can you tell me the range for u shot you can just tell them like u shot requires 2 bytes and 2 bytes equal to 16 bits we need to convert 16 bits to decimal and you need to tell that okay so i see students uh, students by hurting them so definitely don't do it because you cannot remember all the range for all this so you should know how to get it rather than uh, rather than uh, remembering all of them okay so so that is how we got byte and u short the next one which we have is u int so u int is unsigned int so unsigned int uh, which takes four bytes and definitely we don't i'm not going to convert this to um, 4 bytes is something like 32 bits 32 ones which we need to convert to uh, decimal so I'm not doing it but keep it in mind like uh, for u int the the size is 4 bytes and after u int we have u long which is unsigned long for which the size is 8 bytes so if you want to store very 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 big numbers or large numbers you have to go for u long if you want to store small numbers or uh, rather very small numbers if you, you have to go for byte so these are the four data types which you you will use if you want to store only positive numbers okay so these four data types will not support negative numbers so for negative numbers you have to go for the first four data types which are s byte s byte is signed byte so so for s byte again the size is one byte so if you see for a byte as i already told it takes eight bits so the first bit is used for signature in s byte the first bit is used for signature and the remaining seven bits is used to store the number so if you convert seven bits to seven bits to decimal what you will get is so let's let me open calculator so let me convert seven bits seven bits is like seven ones one two three four five six seven so I'm not adding eighth bit because the remaining the first bit is used for storing whether the number is positive or negative. So that is stored for that is used for storing signature. So now when I convert to decimal, I'll get 127. So now the range for the range for s byte is uh, the range for s byte is minus 128 to 127. So I'm not going to tell how you got this 128. So I'll give it to you. Uh, ideally, it should be minus 127 to 127. So how we got this 128, uh, you have to research for today and you have to tell me tomorrow. Or if you are able to find it. Okay, some uh, some of you looks like got it. Anyway, so you please spend some time around five minutes and you have to do some research and you have to you have to you can mail me the answer how you got this 128 i need i need the detailed uh, description for this so 
now i'm not explaining this now okay so tomorrow's class i'll explain it i mean next class i'll explain it so if someone asks you what is the range for s byte how did you get this once 127 if someone tells why it is 127 because you have to tell that uh, for s byte signed byte the first bit is used for signature and the remaining seven bits is used for storing the number and the seven bits when you convert to decimal it is 127 okay so that is how we got signed byte similarly we have short int and long which all these three will also store negative numbers so for short if someone asks you what is the range for short all you need to do is you need to enter instead of 16 bits you need to enter 15 bits so when we enter 16 bits we got the number as 65535 we got like this so now if you enter uh, if you enter 15 bits you will get 32000 uh 32767 so the range for short is minus 32000 minus 32768 to 32767 okay so that is how we get the range range uh, range values so no need to buy hard them you can just uh, you should know how to convert how to how to get the values okay so i repeat again If you want to store only positive numbers, you have to go for byte, u short, u int, or u long, depending on uh, depending on the number which you want to store. For example, if I want to store age of a person, if I want to store age of a person, which data type I need to use? Yeah, yeah. so if you want to store age of a person definitely byte will do because byte uh, age of a person cannot be negative and age of a person cannot be more than 255 at least cannot be more than 100 nowadays so so definitely byte is sufficient more than enough to store age of a person so if you want to store um if you want to store mm marks and total marks of subjects for example i have six subjects and if i want to store in that way what i need to use uh, six subjects so i have maximum like 500 so which data type i can use again marks cannot be negative so i'll go for u short okay so that is how you have to decide on using the best possible data type otherwise you are wasting the memory for example if i want to store age of a person why should i use u long If I use u long, I'm I'm using eight bytes memory, which is not required. Okay, so depending on the value which you want to save, you have to you have to use uh, appropriate data type. Okay, so now let me test your memory. So can you ping me the eight data types which we have? Let me see who will ping the who will ping first. Eight data types which we discussed. question for all of you uh you need to ping in single shot uh in a single line like using comma let me see who will who can recollect all the eight data types i got one response from bobby uh it's um yeah it's perfect so i got response from mauna yeah byte u short u int u long s byte short int long okay perfect so now uh i got three responses i'm waiting for other responses so just recollect so byte u short u int u long s byte short int long okay perfect so now next question so what is the size of short size means how many bytes it is required how many bytes is required for short yeah i'm getting yeah okay so what is the size h2k emphasis provides world class online it training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide h2k emphasis how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus 
one time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes h2k emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide for a free demo class visit us at h2kemphasis.com